We'll start with the uh, suited and booted Irish contingent going into Royal Garden Hotel Kensington, which I have no doubt, Gavin, is a nice hotel, to uh, make mm. their final presentations to uh, World Rugby. 30 minutes long presentation, 20-minute uh, Q&A. We've had Bono, we've had Geldof, we've had Poetry, we had our Taoiseach there, we had Brian Driscoll, Neve Briggs there. We're talking about the political um, niceties of North and South working together. And uh, it seems we made a very good presentation. Jerry Thornley, your colleague, said that the Irish bid to host the 2023 Rugby World Cup was considerably more thorough, detailed, impressive than its rivals from France and South Africa when they each made their presentations this morning. Um, so talk to us. Do we have any clear idea of our chances of getting the World Cup here in 2023 after today? No, but um, I interviewed Bernard Laporte a couple of weeks ago before the um, scandal about him taking money from Montpellier and all that mess. And... Uh, nothing really seems to matter because he just keeps coming back to the point that we're going to deliver. We've got better stadiums, we've got better transport system, we're a big country and our corporate's going to make more money than ever before. More money than Euro 2016, which is a crazy... What? Yeah, which, is, which just sounds crazy that they're going to be able to generate more money from the oh. Rugby World Cup than from the European Championships in football. Oh. Um, but we've got Bob Geldof who uh, delivered Live Aid. Um, so... All these things, I think a lot of it's sorted out. The horse trading has been done in the last year. You got Bernard Laporte has been in places like um, in Colombia and they've been in Outer Mongolia, and and then you got people like Dick Spring and Kevin Potts doing that as well. So mm-hmm. this is not sport. This is a political horse trading yeah. thing. Like so, these guys, Ireland are pretty confident that they're going to open up the North American market, which is pretty far-fetched assertion because... Well, the diaspora were mentioned today. Is that, yes. their, is that their route to North America? You know America? what it is? There's four votes in North America, right. okay? There's Canada, USA, and then there's two votes in the North Americans. So I think that they're kind of pushing towards there as we might be able to we might have locked down those four very important votes. Everyone doesn't care. About, the people don't care about um, the whole wonder and the beautiful thing of bringing it to the Emerald Isle and one country, two governments working together and all that. All these people want who are given votes is what can you do for me mm-hmm. if we give you our votes? And we've probably pissed off a lot of people over the years, especially South Africa, where we went with New Zealand. And it's a case of do you want a big World Cup? We're like an England, where England 2015, big country. That means if you want something like that, you've got to go with France. If you want something homely and brilliant like New Zealand produced in 2011, the option's Ireland. Mm. So it's what these people want. And the last question on this, to, to what extent does money play the decisive role? I'm wondering, because the Irish government said it would pay the tournament fee of the £120 million. And they pointed out that's important because a tournament fee directly paid from the Irish government takes huge pressure off the tournament budget itself. It means ticket prices can go as low as €15. Euro. I ask that because we're paying the required €120 million. It seems the French have said, well, we'll give you €170 million just for an extra few quid. And South Africa equally have said, we'll give you €180 million too. So suddenly our €120 million doesn't look so impressive. Is that a key decisive issue for the people making decisions? We'll see what World Rugby says and they come out and re- who they recommend. There's an independent audit being done. So we'll see how that comes from that. Um, Kevin Potts is an interesting man. He's the head of the bid for Ireland. He's the head of corporate for the IRFU. Like He's the guy they sent down to Connacht to sort out their affairs back on those problems. He did all the talking with the Sundays. And he said, look, there's, he talked to all the major Sunday papers yesterday and he goes, look, there's no problem here because we have our government backing it. So that's the base level that they're going to make. So all the other stuff that people are saying is... Important. It, nobody knows. Yeah, okay. you know what I mean? Who knows if they're going to sell all these tickets or not? Yeah. Um, the, the big thing Ireland are coming at is we're going to be able to fill state, these big 30,000 seater stadiums or uh, stadiums, GA stadiums, which is kind of a, a thing that's kind of enhanced the Irish bid that people didn't expect. Okay, full houses.